Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week we're going to do a little bit of sewing. So last year, right before the fire happened in my craft room, I had a great project put together for you guys. And unfortunately, I lost the whole video um, from the fire. And so I decided I wanted to recreate that project for you. It is making your own pillowcases, and I can't wait to share this project with you. I'm going to share with you the burrito method, which sounds really interesting when you're sewing, and I'm also going to teach you how to do a French seam. So I can't wait for you to stick around and see how we make these really nice pillowcases. But hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And if you're one of my faithful followers, welcome back. I just love to hear from you guys. So make sure you put a comment down below and let me know what you think about this project. And hey, don't forget, if you're new, click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. So give me a second. I'm gonna get my camera angle change. I'm gonna meet you at my craft table and we're gonna get sewing this week. So let's get going on with this project. So today, like I was saying in the intro, I want to share with you how you can make your own pillowcases. Now I put together a tutorial on this last March and unfortunately that was the same week that we had the fire here in my craft room. So I knew I wanted to recreate this post because I absolutely just love my pillowcases that I've had on my bed since March. So I wanted to show you how easy you can make it, make them. Now these are great for presents, you guys, or just great just to spruce up your room a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how you can make your pillowcases. I'm also gonna link down below the um, sizes for a standard pillow, a queen size pillow, and a king size pillow. Today I'm gonna be making some queen size pillowcases um, to add to my bedroom. But I'll show you, you know, down below there'll be a link that'll show how much material to buy and what the cutouts are gonna be for each one of the sizes, okay? So I'm also gonna show you a burrito style um, on how to make these. And I know burrito sounds really funny, but it really does work. And it just gives a real professional look to the finish of these um, pillowcases. And then I'm gonna show you what a French seam is. And that is a very finished looking um, seam. And it's great for those items that you gotta do a lot of washing in. And we all know we wash our sheets quite a bit. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the one that I'm gonna show you actually has three different um, fabrics to it. And the reason why I'm going to three is I just like the punch of color that I can do. So there's gonna be a main piece, and my main pillow um, case is going to be this yellow color, okay? And then there is going to be a cuff, which is where I say that punch of color comes in. And then there is going to be a trim piece that kind of pulls the two together, okay? So one of the things I always like to do before I start cutting my fabric is I use my pressing pad and I would give my fabric a really good press, a really good ironing, okay? So I've already done that, okay? So I'm gonna move my pressing pad out of the way. And that was nice. Lisa just knocked over all of her clips. <laughs> I'll pick those up later. Okay, so what we wanna do is with my cutting mat, I've got my cutting mat, I've got my ruler, and I've got my rotary blade. Now you guys absolutely could use scissors for this. I just find that it works so nice with my rotary cutter. Okay, so let's start out. I've got my dimensions over here on a little post-it note, so I'll make sure I get them just right for you guys. And so let's go ahead and start out with the main section of the pillowcase. Now remember you guys, I'm making my pillowcases for a queen size bed, okay? And the cuts I'm gonna give you are for one pillowcase. And of course, you may wanna make double, um, or you wanna 
may want to make, you know, um, four pillowcases, whatever you use on your bed. But keep in mind, these cuts are for one pillow, okay? So my main section is going to be 41 inches by 27 inches, okay? So what I like to do is I like to take my material and I like to fold it up so I can cut um, more than one layer at a time. And it fits on my cutting mat better too. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got my fabric, okay? My fabric is, and it should be 45 width. I'm just going to double check here. So it's 24 inches and it is 24 and 20. So it's a 44 inch is a fabric, okay? So remember I told you that first cut was um, is going to be 41 by 27, okay? So let's cut our 27 length first, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I fold my fabric in half at the 45 um, measurement, okay? Now, I happen to have this material in my stash, um, but you guys would pick up probably about a yard of material um, for this. I've got those exact measurements down below though for you guys, okay? So if I do 27, half of 27 would be 13 and a half, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and again, I'm just folding my material so that I can cut it all at one time, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and come up to my 13 and a half, right about there. And I'm gonna cut these pieces out for you guys, okay? Okay, right there I am at my 13 and a half, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is, just to make it one cut, because I've just got my smaller um, ruler with me, I'm gonna fold that in half one more time, okay? So it might be a little confusing, however works best for you guys to cut your fabric though, okay? So I'm gonna put that at my 13 and a half measurement right there. I'm gonna come down to the bottom here at my zero marking, okay? And I am going to cut that piece of fabric, okay? And there we go, okay? So I've got my first piece of fabric all cut. I'm gonna put my extra material off to the side because I will be making a matching pillowcase for this, okay? So I've got my first piece all cut. And again, that was 41 by 27, okay? Now what I want is I want my cuff piece, that end of the pillowcase. And this one's gonna be 41 by nine, okay? So I had to go through my stash and find some material that I could use for this. I decided I, I was just gonna to try to use up some of the stuff that I have on hand, okay? So again, I'm just gonna fold this so I can get that nine inch cut. Now I do wanna make sure that this is straight as straight can be, okay? So I'm gonna fold it and get a really nice straight cut to it, okay? And sometimes that's why I like to do my pressing also, you guys, is it really helps flatten out that material, okay? And for whatever reason, this is not wanting to lay flat for me today. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be um, nine inches in width, okay? And I happen to have exactly 18 inches right here. Um, I'm gonna trim off the edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut both of these, because like I said, you guys, I'm eventually gonna make matching pillowcases. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one here, right at the zero. That way I know I've got a clean cut, okay? And then I'm gonna come up at my nine inch marker, and I'm gonna do another cut, okay? So I've got my cuff piece, and while we're here, you guys, I'm just gonna clean this one up because I will use it for my next one. And get that a quick cut, okay? Okay, so two pieces of cut, okay? So the next thing that we need to do 
is we need to cut our trim piece. Now our trim piece is going to be only two inches. It's just a little, um, a little trim piece that we're going to add. Okay, so I want to find where my 45 is again, and I'm just going to do two inches. Okay, and then we'll clean up that to be 41 inches um, when I get to that point. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here, you guys. I'm going to straighten that out. I folded it up. Okay, so I have a nice, I'm going to clean that edge up first. I always like to clean my edges up, just in case my fold's off just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to clean that edge up right at the zero marking on my um, board. And then this is just a two inch cuff. Okay, so I'm just going to, okay, and there I've got my cuff piece. Put this off to the side. I do want to trim this one down to be the 41 inches though. So again, that's going to be 13 and a half. No, excuse me, 41 inches. That is going to be 20 and a half, right? Okay, so now what we have is we have got our um, trim piece. 41 by 2. We have got our um, cuff piece, 41 by 9, and we've got our main um, piece that is um, 41 by 27. Okay? So, we're done with our cutting. Okay? So, what I want to do now is I'm going to move my um, pressing mat back in. And boy, does Lisa got clips everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's Okay, so I've got my pressing pad back in, and the very first step we want to do, you guys, is we want to take wrong sides together, and we want to press our trim piece. Now, it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see this trim piece, because it's the same color as my pressing pad, okay? But what I'm doing is I am just putting wrong sides together. So basically, your right side is facing out. Now my fabric, it's really kind of hard to tell what is the wrong and the right because it's all the same um, material, the same pattern, right? So just make sure you take a look at it and determine which one is your wrong side and which is your right side. And I'm just going to give this a really good press, okay? And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to grab that trim piece and we're going to do some clipping, okay? So this has got a nice press, really important, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my trim piece and I'm gonna put my trim piece in front of me with my right side showing, okay? So my right sides are up, okay? Then I'm going to take my trim piece and with the salvage edges, so the open edges, I'm going to match up the salvage edges, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to clip this in place, okay? You guys, it'll, you guys will be amazed at how easy these are to put together um, once you start doing it. I had a girlfriend tell me that she had made these and just did a whole bunch of them up for gifts. I thought it was such a great idea. And, you know, you go out to the store and you look at some of the the pillowcases that have a lot of design and, and they're pretty spendy, right? Okay, so now we've got this one clipped all together, okay? So you guys can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my main piece, okay? I'm gonna open it up, okay? And what I'm gonna do is lay it on top, okay? So I'm gonna lay it right on top of this piece and I'm matching up, up my ends and I'm going to clip. So now what I have is I have got three pieces of fabric clipped together. Okay, so just let me show that to you so you guys can understand. I've got my cuff piece, my trim piece, and now my main piece. Okay, and my main piece we are putting 
the wrong side down, okay? So basically, what I have is I have got my cuff piece and my main piece, right sides are together, okay? And I had to trim that, the other piece to be 41 inches, but we'll take care of that here in just a minute, okay? So, I just wanna review this because this is really important before we go to the next step, okay? So, I have got the, the cuff piece face up, so my good fabric is facing me. I've got the trim piece folded in half, okay? And the salvage edges are matched up. And then I've got my good piece or my main piece of fabric and I've got it facing down, okay? So right now I'm looking at the wrong side of my fabric, okay? Now this part, because this is kind of long, you guys, you gotta, be, you gotta work with this. This is where the burrito part comes in, okay? So we are going to roll up the main piece of our fabric and we're gonna roll it until we see that cuff piece, okay? So there, see how I see that cuff piece now, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the cuff piece and I am gonna sandwich it in or wrap it around the main piece, okay? Sounds a little confusing, I know you guys, but this is what they call the burrito part because we're wrapping it up and we've got it all wrapped up together, okay? I know it sounds confusing and I know the first time I did this method, I was like, are you sure this is all gonna come out just right? And it does, it works so nice, you guys. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my edges are clipped together really, really close, okay? Lined up just right. When I say really close, I meant to say that they're lined up, okay? So I've got it all lined up. Now again, let's just peek in on this one, you guys. I'm gonna unclip it. See how this is all rolled up? Everything's rolled up nice and tight in there. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to put a quarter inch seam all the way down. Now you wanna make sure when you rolled up the main piece that it is not, it's not gonna get picked up in your seam at all, okay? We only want to be catching the bottom of the trim, um, excuse me, the bottom of the cuff, the trim, and the main piece, and then the top of the trim, okay? So I'll give you a close-up view of that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna make sure that I start and do a back stitch because I really want to secure this stitch. I'm going to go all the way down and then I'm going to secure that stitch at the end. And then I'll meet you right back here, okay? Okay, so I have a new angle on my sewing machine and I'm hoping that you guys can see this a little bit better than we've done in past videos. If you guys like this angle, make sure you leave me a comment down below. And now I can show you just a little bit closer up view too of that fabric. So this is the bottom of my cuff, okay? And then this is um, the, the main part. There is my trim, and then there is the top part of the cuff, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I've got my um, presser foot already down. I'm gonna do a quick little stitch, and then I'm gonna do a back stitch, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carry right on, and I'm gonna do a stitch all the way down. I did that secure stitch at the end. I'm gonna raise my presser foot and I'm gonna use my little clippers and there we are. We've got that seam all the way down. Okay, so let's hop back over to the um, work table. Okay, now this is where the fun part comes out, you guys. Okay, so we've got our stitch all the way down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start removing the inside out. And it takes a little bit of time 
Um, but it all comes out. Now I've got my iron right next to me because I'm going to give this a good press as soon as I pull this all out. But you just pull it all the way through and you guys will see how cool this little burrito turn looks. Okay, so I'm just continuing to pull it out. Okay, and look at that you guys. I've got that nice trim on there. It looks very professional. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my iron and we're going to give it a good, good press. Okay. Now I do like to use 100% cotton. Um, Coulter's cotton is always nice um, when I'm doing my pillowcases, but you definitely can use the type of fabric you want to use. Um, again, like I said, just been trying to use up a little bit of what's in my stash. And um, I had this material and thought that it was kind of a fun combination. Um, and so, we're just giving it a really good press and I'm pulling up right where my little trim piece is so I can give it all, get it all nice and flat. Okay. Believe it or not, you guys, we've got two more seams and these are going to, this is going to be all done. That's how quick and easy it is to get these put together. Okay. So now what I want to do is bear with me because this is where the, the interesting part comes in is we are going to do a French seam. Now to do a French seam you guys what you do first is you put right sides facing out okay so basically lay the pillow I'm, I'm folding it in half okay this is my long way I'm folding it in half and I've got that trim piece showing so this is the right side of the pillowcase okay and I've got it all folded nice okay I'm going to grab my clips that did not fall on the ground okay and I'm going to clip my pillowcase now I will tell you guys right now that I'm going to trim this up only because I didn't trim it up before we started okay so I'm going to move my pressing pad out of the way for a moment and the only reason being is this is definitely not even um, and this French seam piece is really important so I'm just going to measure up or line up and then I'm going to give this a good trim um, with my rotary cutter again okay normally I don't do that this at this step you guys but because I didn't trim it originally um, I really need to do this. Okay, so I'm going to measure up right where my trim piece ends. Okay, and just to make sure I'm nice and straight, I'm going to go on my, look at my cutting board and just clean this all up really quick. Okay, so now I know I've got a perfectly straight edge. Okay, so with my right side showing out, Okay, I am going to clip. Now the main piece that you want to have lined up really nice is right where this trim piece comes. Okay, so I'm going to do a clip right there and I'll take a picture of that and show it to you. Actually, you know what you guys, I'll give you a close up view when we get over to the sewing machine um, with this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put some clips down. And what we're going to do is we are going to give this a quarter inch seam down these two sides, okay? This side, of course, doesn't need it because that's where our fold is, okay? So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I am going to do a stitch all the way down here and all the way around the bottom, okay? So I'll meet you right back. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine and this is the, I'm going to unclip this just so I can show this to you a little bit closer, you guys. This is a seam that you want to have matched up really nice, okay? Because we want that to look really good on the other side, okay? So this is the inside, okay? And this is my good side, okay? So I've got those trim pieces matched up just perfect, okay? So I'm just gonna put a clip on those and a clip at the top or close to the top, okay? And then we're gonna start sewing, 
okay? And I am gonna do a quarter inch seam again, okay? And I'm gonna do a secure stitch, and then I am going to just stitch right along, okay? So I'm doing a, and I back stitched it, so that's gonna secure my stitch, and then I'm just gonna stitch right along. And we wanna make sure this one is nice and straight. So go slow. There's a little bit of fabric right there, so make sure that you are very careful there. Depending on the, the um, type of fabric you're using, you may even wanna use a walking foot there. But just with the, the cotton that I have here, I'm not needing to use that, that walking foot. Getting down to this corner, you guys, and I'm gonna sink my needle. See how my needle's down? I'm gonna raise my presser foot and I'm gonna turn my fabric that way, okay? Put my presser foot back down and then sew along. Raise my needle, cut my thread, and raise my presser foot, okay? So we've got that seam done all the way around, okay? We're gonna pop over and I'm gonna show you how to trim this up. Okay, so I wanna give you a close-up view of this, and I know it's probably gonna be a little hard to see because I've got white um, thread on my material. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna come down to the cuff because I think you might be able to see this just a little bit better, okay? So if I take my ruler and i'm gonna lay my ruler i do this up close right here is a quarter inch okay so right where this mark is i'm gonna lay that right on my seam line okay so what we're doing is we want to trim up the edges of this okay so I'm just gonna trim it all up. I got that one part and then I'm just gonna move it down. And this is really important. And so you don't want to fold this, this time you don't wanna fold it, you guys. You want to be right there on that seam, okay? Because for the French seam, we're gonna enclose this whole seam. So we wanna make sure it is exactly a quarter inch all the way around. This is why you're really going to want to use a ruler, you guys, and you're going to want to use a rotary cutter for this part. Okay, so I'm doing all of my sides, okay, and I'm just putting that mark again right on where my seam is, and it's even a little hard for me to see, you guys, because I've got that white thread. Um, but just take your time and make sure you get that measured up really nice. It's going to make all the difference when you go to finish off this pillowcase because you guys we've got one more seam to do and our pillowcase is going to be done okay so now we are going to turn our pillowcase inside out okay so and the way i know that it is the um the, the inside is out is my trim piece is not showing okay Remember, there's no trim piece showing. My trim piece is inside, okay? What I like to do now is I wanna bring my pressing pad back in. And I like to give this a good press. And the reason why I give it a press now is it really helps when I go to sew in that seam, okay? So I'm gonna press it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and at the sewing machine, I'm going to do a just a hair bigger than a quarter inch, okay? And that is going to enclose that whole seam and give it a completely finished look, okay? So you're not going to run into any issues when you're washing this pillowcase. No raveling ends. And it just looks so, so professional. Takes your sewing up to that next level. People use this French seam um, on all kinds of garments um, and different things. You can um, use it on lots of different things. I see people using it on pants, 
It's another way just to finish off that seam. Now remember where I told you you wanted that one seam really matched up, right? Where the, the cuff and everything is? Give that a really good press, okay? Because that is going to be um, quite a bit, quite a few layers of material coming through, okay? So now you guys, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do that same stitch and we're going to be done. So I'll join you right back. Okay, we are back at the sewing machine and I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing each time you guys. I'm going to do a couple stitches. I'm going to do a back stitch. And then this time I am doing just a hair bigger than a quarter inch seam, okay? And I'm just using my presser foot as my guide. If you look really closely here, you guys, you'll be able to see that seam that we just did. And the key here is you want to enclose that whole part of the Okay, I'm gonna do a back stitch. Raise my foot needle, clip it, and there we have it. Okay, let's hop back over to the table and we will reveal our completed pillowcase. Okay, we ready? We've got one pillowcase all done. I'm gonna put it inside out. And I have got a completely beautiful pillowcase. Remember, I made this one queen size, okay? I'll go grab a pillow and, and put in it so you guys can see it all done. Um, but I'm gonna whip up the second one so I have a matching pillowcase. But I just love how these colors came together to make these cute pillowcases. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna make some and I'd love to see pictures of the ones you made. So let me get working on the second one. As soon as I get done with that, I'll put some pictures together for you of these all with my pillows in them. And thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And here's that finished pillow case and I just love it. And yes, I did make a matching one and I just love how they look on our bed. So I hope you enjoyed this Inspiration Friday project where I showed you how you can make your own pillows using the burrito roll method and a French seam. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for other DIY type projects, check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.